Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mum and Loves UGB here on Flosstube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. And it is, well it will be Sunday morning. Um, it is Saturday night for me, so I'm actually filming at the right time. Uh, it feels like an absolute age since I filmed a Flosstube because although you wouldn't, well, you would remember because I told you, um, but I filmed a week ago on Wednesday, ready to put the floss tube out on Sunday. So yeah, I haven't filmed a floss tube for like 10 days or so. Um, now don't get excited, that doesn't mean that I've got lots and lots of finishes to show you. I've got one finish and a couple of things that I've been working on, but I've got lots and lots to tell you about. So um, I'll probably chuck that in um, as we're going along and no doubt I'll forget some of it as well. But that's just the way life is. So, um, I'm going to get on and I'm going to show you what I've finished. Um, some of you will have seen already on Instagram what I've finished and I am really really pleased to have her finished because I worked, now I have ironed her but I have just also dropped her. Um, I worked really hard to get this finished because Anita from the Northumberland Sampler House was having a little giveaway um, for those people who had finished certain samplers now I can't remember what they were but I did talk about them on my last floss tube by Easter Sunday and I was up in Northumberland and I thought that the first part of the week I'd got a really good start on this sampler so I just had a little bit to do whilst we were kind of up with family well <laughs> I had more than I thought and I really really struggled to get her to get her finished to the point where I actually did uh, email Anita at one point and say um what time on Sunday were you planning to do the, the draw, the giveaway? Um, so yeah, I finished her about, I think, seven o'clock on, uh, on Sunday evening. So anyway, here she is in all her absolute glory. And I think this is going to be one of the most favourite things that I've stitched so far. Certainly my one of my favourite samplers that I've stitched. So I'll try and show you her and be able to see what I've stitched. So um, it's on a piece of 32 count that I hand dyed myself, but it's just quite a, a plain neutral with more of a yellow sort of beige base to it. Um, and then you've got all stitched in DMC. There's that border. Now I actually stitched the border last. Usually I would probably put the border in first, but, um, it's it's not a complicated border there is a pattern to it once you get into it but it's also there's a lot of room for error so I start stitched the house first and then by by that point I had the fences as well which gave me some extra clues as to what to to try and put where and um, as you can see she has a dog on her front lawn now in her original pattern the dog is brown but obviously in my pattern, I've turned the little dog into Albus. And other than that, it is the called for. And thank you to the person who messaged me very, very kindly on Instagram and pointed out that when I'd put the picture up, I'd actually forgotten to stitch one of the little flowers, one of the little beige flowers. Um, I was pushing for a finish really, really quickly and I sort of just missed that one. So there she is, all done. And I do have a frame for her. I have a vintage frame. So that's the, the frame that I've had for ages. And I will take out the, um, the picture, the etching. I'm not sure it's anything extravagant. I don't think I'm going to be losing thousands by taking it out. I think I might just have to shore the corners up. But if I can, I'll just at least fold her slightly so you can see how she might look in the frame. There we go. So that will be her frame. It's going to have slightly bigger borders on than I perhaps would normally, normally do. Um, but for a sample of this size, for a frame that's nearly there, I can I can live with that. And I don't think I would even worry about cutting it cutting it down. I think I'm just going to use it as it is. 
so hopefully fingers crossed by next week I will have her in her frame because that's what I'm planning to do tomorrow so my busy few days so I went home to the Cotswolds which is where I filmed my floss tube and um, I was just there for a very short amount of time just enough time to pick up um, Martha Chubb Martha Chubb is that her name Matilda Chubb Matilda Chubb that's it um, and she's actually still at my mum's house because I couldn't fit her in the car on the way home but that's by the by and then um, after the Wednesday I went up to Northumberland on the Thursday um, because Ness's grandparents are from Northumberland so her dad's her dad's uh, parents not her dad's grandparents her dad's parents are from Northumberland so he was at home massaging and um, watching dolphins and so we went up there and we had a lovely time we did all sorts of different things um, sort of a few places around the area went to Tynemouth um, they have a fantastic market in in Tynemouth station um, on a Saturday and a Sunday so we went there and I could have looked around there for ages it was a combination of like a food market and a um, craft market and there was also sort of antique and bric-a-brac sellers there as well and I could have just looked around there for ages I didn't see any needlework kind of that needed rescuing but um, I'm sure there was probably some somewhere because it was absolutely ram jam packed um, and we went and played dinosaur crazy golf in Tynemouth and there was a sort of bouncy slide thing uh, Ness actually got told off so it was one of those big inflatable slides and she didn't know but she bounced a few times on the top and jumped off the top because she's got no fear and she sort of hit the slide about halfway down and then went straight to the bottom and that was absolutely fine with her but um, yeah the attendant pointed out that she was not supposed to uh, jump from the top she was supposed to slide down like a normal person um, but she had she had fun and we went to the metro center one day and oh just just all sorts of places but on the way home we actually went to York um, now I've never been to York before and the most heart-wrenching thing was that I drove past the signpost for Christina from Whilst Iris Naps Village so had I been on my own and not kind of meeting family in York as well I, I would have called in for tea <laughs> totally unannounced I just called in for tea um, but York was lovely I've got a few little pictures of York um, which I might put in here and enjoyed looking around the shambles and looked at the outside of York Minster, we didn't go in. But the one shop, oh, uh, I hope I'm still gonna be able to video, it just went onto low power mode, we'll see. Um, the one shop I wanted to go into was shut, it was shut on a Wednesday. Now the shop I wanted to go into was the York Ghost Merchants, and I don't know if you've ever heard of York Ghost Merchants, but it's this tiny little shop in the shambles that make these ghosts, and they decorate these ghosts, and they're really, really beautiful and really collectible. Now I do actually have one. So if you look at the packaging there, isn't that lovely? And that's exactly what the little shop looks like from the outside. I don't know what it looks like from the inside because they were shut. And then they make and decorate these ghosts. So Chris bought me this one for my birthday last year because you can sometimes buy them online if you're really, really quick. Um, so this was their July ghost from last year. I'll try and show you his outline. And I just fancied another, another ghost or two, but I'll go back another day. So, what else have I been up to? I have stitched on this one. So this is Cross Stitch Collector by The Primitive Hair. And I bought this as a kit and I managed to do just a little bit more. So I finished her dress and I've got to do some more of the lettering. 
Now it calls for really quite a bit of Krynic. I don't think I'm going to do the Krynic. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to fill in the O's either. We'll see. I'm definitely going to put buttons on the inside. It did come with buttons, but I may switch it and put some vintage buttons that I've got there. And yeah, I'm going to change up the colours, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to do the Krynic. I don't think. And then the other thing that I stitched on was something that I started, oh, actually in February, but I don't think I actually showed it to you because it was an abysmal start. Um, and it's, it's this. And obviously this has been a lot of people's unicorns for a long, long time. The ES Spot Motif Sampler by um, Of Female Worth. Now you can get this as a PDF download from 1884 Stitchery. And that's where I got mine. And as I said, I started it in February. I started it on Ness's birthday, but only had the meagrest outline done. And so those are the beautiful colours. And this is where I've got to on that. So this is stitched on 36 count flannel flower by Fox and Rabbit, which was the first of their fabric of the months in the club that I'm part of. And I think they did release it at market, I think. A little bit of news for those of you who are in the Fox and Rabbit Club, you will know that I'm responsible for posting out the UK um, subscriptions. So they all come to me in a big bag and then I post them out and I've had the notification that they are on the plane. So they are on the plane from Australia. So I'm hoping to get those in the next few days and I will get them straight out to everybody ASAP because I can't wait to see what colour it is. I can't wait because there's two or three little things I want to start and I'm waiting to see what fabric colour it is because I just know one of them is going to be just perfect. So talking about, what was I talking about? I'm probably waffling as normal. Let's do a freebie. Let's do a freebie. So I found this one um, and it is Earth Day. It was to do with Earth Day and this is by Beth Twist from Heartstring Sampling. Now she did this for an Earth Day a few years ago um, and she's re-released it with a little bit of an extra twist. Um, now that's not the full design but that's kind of the way it printed out. It says use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. Except when it comes to stitching stuff and then buy all the things. So that's the actual chart pattern and I'll put the link for you to go and download that. Now when I first saw this it didn't quite make sense to me um, and it was more to do with the border. Some of the border being on the inside and then some of the border being on the outside. But what I thought was it would make a really nice front for a stitching pocket and how appropriate would that be wouldn't it? Use it up, wear it out, make it make it do or do without and then you could make this as the top flap and just kind of actually even maybe fussy cut the edge like that to make a sort of a flap to go over a, um, a needle book or a stitching book. It would be a bit bigger than a needle book but I think that would be absolutely lovely and you can do it in all sorts of different colours. It has got some suggested um, colours and I think there's uh, a different colourway suggested on black as well. Um, so yeah Earth Day 2011 it was originally done for, but as good today as it was in 2011. Right, what I've got left now is a good bit of haul and some plans, some plans that I want to do. So I'm going to do the plans first of all, and some of those plans are to do with Northumberland Sampler House, who designed Caroline Scott. So let's start with those. Now, we know, or we should know, that Northumberland Sampler House have just released another epic sampler, and I'm in the mood for samplers at the minute, um, which is Sybil Ann Irving. Now, I know Brenda and Laura were showing this at the weekend, and I love this one. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I'd like to do a drum with just the houses and maybe the alphabet. And the more I see of it, the more I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe I'd like to do a bit more of it. Not sure. Mm. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle, as close as the middle as I can, and then I'm going to stitch that bit first, uh, but I'm going to leave enough room if I want to put the border on as well. And the colours for this one are on one of these rings, because I have just bought, I think it's that one, I've just bought lots of DMC uh, from Patchwork Rabbit actually. It came today. Thank you very much Carla for getting that out while Catherine's sunning herself on her holidays. I've seen the photos. So those are the colourways. Absolutely beautiful. Love, love, love. So we want to start that. I've got no business starting anything but I'm not doing a big mania this year so that will allow me a little couple of starts. And then the other thing that it's from the Northumberland Sampler House, is they're doing a stitch along, a four month stitch along for this, which is IA1812. And it's a Scottish sampler, I believe. Does it, say, does it tell me that anywhere? Or have I just assumed that? I may have read it somewhere, but I also, it also looks like a Scottish sampler to me. Um, so June 1st, if you sign up for this, you'll get the pattern for the top part. Um, June, July, struggling with the months there. The next bit down. August, the next bit down. So this will finish in September. Um, and the colours for this one are these. And I think there's one I'm missing. I think I saw a note to, ha to add 816 as well. Um, which I've got in another ring, so I shall grab another 816. So those are the colours for those. And the suggested fabric is sandstone, which you can get from Northumberland Sampler House, um, as well as thread drops and floss bling. Um, what do I normally call it? Ring bling. Um, you can buy all that sort of stuff. But I don't know why, but I kind of think I almost want to do it on a pinker linen. So the previous, the very last month's Fox and Rabbit was Pink Salt Lake. And so I've got a 36 count Pink Salt Lake. I kind of want to do it. Let's get a, a good bit. I kind of want to do it on a kind of pinker background and I don't know why. But that could all change depending on what's coming in this envelope. So... We shall see. But I did think about the Pink Salt Lake also for that one too, to make those lighter colours pop a little bit more. I don't know. I'm undecided. The world is my oyster. Because I do want to do a bit of dyeing as well. I do want to dye some fabric. And the thing that I want to dye some fabric for is this one, Cherry Jubilee by Teresa Cogut. So this is from the Patreon. You have to be in her Patreon to be able to grab this. And I was, I did have a bit of a fangirl moment actually in the week because, because Teresa has actually started stitching this because I said I was gonna start stitching it. So she started stitching it. Because obviously for her Patreon, what you get is a, a digital mock-up. Um, there's no way she could stitch everything for her Patreon. So um, she started to stitch it. So these are the colors. There's lots of greens, but some beautiful reds. Uh, there's the kudzu that I showed you last week and the crimson but the most of it is DMC now I've bought the number of th strands number of strands number of skeins that she says but I'm guessing that's probably going to be for a 28 count um, and I will probably end up doing mine on 36 so we shall see but I've got I know what kind of color fabric I want for that um, so I'm going to try and dye it so there's that as well. So not only have I got no business starting anything, I've got no business starting like three other things either, but that will not stop me. So I think what we're on to now is haul and stitchy kindness. So obviously when you were ordering threads from Patchwork Rabbit, and if anybody wants to grab anything Patchwork Rabbit, I do have a link down below. Um, I grabbed a couple of skeins of Schoolhouse Red because you can never have enough Schoolhouse Red. And then I also thought this one looked interesting as well, tortoise shell. So I'll grab that one as well. Just because 
I don't have any real plans for them, but then you never know. That's why you have stash. That is why you have stash. And then, oh, I also grabbed this as well, because I've wanted this for ages and it's not always in stock in places when, when I see it. So this is the one that's um, la -dee da the Wicked Witch. There we go. And it says, ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch, witch, the wicked witch. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Or oh, the wicked witch is dead. I love that. I love that. I can't wait to do that for, for Halloween time. And I love the fact that it's framed as well. I do like, I do like a, a long skinny frame. Did you see Brenda's framing of the giant pear? What's it called? The house and the giant pear? Something like that. With this giant chunky frame on it it looked it looked fabulous perfect choice print absolutely loved it right what else have we got here a little bit of stitchy kindness this came from yasmin from yasmin's made with love and she said she had two copies of this and would i like one so this is the english sampler berries um which is by erin michaels and i love that it actually reminded me of Crow's Feet Stitching's um, Kittle. I can't remember what her first name is, but you've got the choice of doing either the big sampler or the drum. And the colours in that reminded me of those. So I think that would look, would look nice next to that, that particular drum. So thank you very much for sending me that, Yasmin. I do appreciate it. Uh, a little bit of stuff from D-Stash. So um, people always say to me, well, where do you get your stuff from, from D-Stash from? So if you go onto Facebook and you just type in cross-stitch D-Stash groups, something will come up in your particular area, your country. Um, and so that's, that's just what I did. Became a member of those groups. So these two came from Vivian, who is... Yeah, what well, they were from Vivian, who sent me a couple of little cards because I managed to like get two charts why well, I didn't just do it both at the same time I don't know can't remember so one of them was berry bird which I've loved for a million years as Laura would say and another scarlet house one this one is called needfuls there we go nearly couldn't see it on the on the middle there so love those love those I especially like the patterned ones actually like this one and the pattern on this one as well so that to add to my stash I got my ferret from cottage garden samplings I've only been doing this this stitch long since December and I still can't sell it say it and I normally say it probably once every episode at least um so I got mine and I got the DMC for it as well look at those greens and I because I've already got the fancy threads for these so I just get the DMC from Peakside because Peakside had already done I'd already bought the fancy floss from Peakside and then from eBay, I just picked up some Stacy Nash, I can never say it, Stacy Nash Primitives. Try, it's hard to say, Stacy Nash. I, I wanna get an extra sh in there somewhere. So I got the Winter Beekeeper thread board. Lovely. Uh, I got Wool and Flax pocket roll. Try not to get the glare on that one. I got, I love this one, Amelia Pool Sewing Basket. I just love, the thing I like most, I think, is the colour of the fabric. It really stands out. Just chuck that one on the floor. And then I have got Scattered Seed Samplers from Me to Thee. Now, let me just take Sally's note out of there. There we go. And it's just a beautiful little sort of springtime strawberry. 
Did I need any of those? I did not. There we go. <laughs> I also care not to jot. And then my last bit of haul was this book. Now I'd never seen this book before until somebody put it up for sale um, on a D-stash site in America. I think. No, it wasn't America. It was it was um, on the continent because the price was in euros. And I missed out on it. And so I had a look to see if I could find it. And I found a secondhand copy, I think through Amazon. Um, and it's this book, Marquard d'Angleterre. So English samplers, basically. Um, and I believe from my pigeon, uh, my pigeon French, which is not very good, that this is the lady behind Riflet de Soie. Um, so Isabelle. And what you've got in here is the charts for five different samplers, five different English samplers. So I'll show you just very briefly the samplers. Uh, the first one is Anne Grove. Now I really like that one, but I don't like the colours. So if I did stitch that one, I would change the colours on that one. So that's the first one. That's the one that I don't like. But I don't. It's not I don't like it. I just not as keen on it. This one is beautiful. This one's called Caroline Skinner. And I love the border. I love the big house, but I think I would probably take that bit out and maybe just do it as just that bit. And then I like that as well. And then you've got, oh, here it comes. Now this is my absolute favorite one. This is called ESJ King. And I love that with the cat. And I just like the pinks and the purples and the reds in that sampler. And I like the next one too. Especially this one. This is called Isabel Robson. Robertson. Isabel. And I think that's absolutely beautiful as well. And again, I like it on the blue or the grey. And one more, one more. This is Margaret Hugh. Again, an absolutely beautiful sampler. So I hope you can see the colours in those. Let me just show you what the charts look like. They are... Oh. I've got another warning for the battery, so we'll see. Black and white with just a nice amount on each page. So again, that's that book if you wanted to try and find a copy of it. So for the price I paid, even if I just stitch one sampler, that would be plenty. And there's definitely little bits that I will take from the other samplers, even if I don't stitch all of them. Um, but yeah, I was really intrigued when I saw that book come up and then, and then went on to try and find it. Right, I'm gonna love you and leave you today. Um, I'm a little bit tired, I have to say. It does feel like I've, well I have, I've driven all the way around the country. <laughs> I went to a funeral on Friday as well. Um, a good friend of mine's mum um, and whilst it was a really really sad day it was really lovely to see everybody as well so um, we're a close we're a close bunch and we do see each other one all the time but it was just everyone was just there for one another and it was it was so so nice just to have have that at the funeral um, and I know it helped him and his sister a lot so um, so yeah I will be back to normal next week as normal as I ever am um, and I hope you have a really really good stitchy week with lots and lots of good things coming your way and I will see you then. Stay classy stitches.